kind of tag teaming off of the discussion last week of how incredible Liz and I still find the Lord of the Rings movies, um, something really sad kind of came out last week, which is uh, making me kind of question my position on the Hobbit trilogy, um, or at least contextually. See, I was always under the impression that during the Hobbit trilogy, Peter Jackson was just kind of drunk on CGI power and uh, for some reason decided to make a really bombastic, um, silly, ridiculous, over-the-top story from The Hobbit uh, stretched across three movies. Um, but someone did a really good job taking all the clips from the appendices of The Hobbit movies so far and cutting up all the chunks that really kind of highlight what a rushed... Um, Pro, uh, production the whole thing was, all three movies, um, how, you know, Guillermo del Toro had been on the movie for two years and got to do all this pre-production, everything from locations to plotting out, you know, writing the script and how he wanted to tell the story, and then, you know, the whole uh, writer strike happened and, you know, MGM or New Line, <laughs> MGM was James Bond, that's when um, uh, Quantum of Solace happened. For The Hobbit, it was New Line and they were waiting for funding and all that, and so then Guillermo del Toro went off to do Pacific Rim and Peter Jackson came on board. And, you know, I remember all those production videos he was releasing, and everyone seemed happy, and it was like, oh, this is great, we're returning to Middle Earth. Um, turns out he was averaging, like, three hours of sleep and pretty miserable, as were most of the crew, because they just did not get the time to prepare for this trilogy the same way Lord of the Rings did. Lord of the Rings, you know, uh, as, as anyone will tell you, was absolutely a labor of love. You watch the behind-the-scenes features there, and everyone is so passionate about everything they're doing, uh, right down to the people who are just making chainmail. And then it sounds like with The Hobbit, it was just everyone was stressed out all the time and just meeting impossible deadlines. And uh, I just, I feel really bad for, for everyone involved. And uh, I mean, I'm looking forward to getting the, the extended editions because uh, I think it's going to be a really interesting companion um, appendices, uh, you know, Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. And, you know, I think, I think just as much as learning lessons from things done well, there's also a lot to learn from when things are done poorly. Um, you know, same way, you know, you learn from your mistakes, you can also learn a lot from other people's mistakes. And uh, I think it'll be really interesting over the years. I mean, if, if the appendices are as well produced for The Hobbit as they were for Lord of the Rings, and if they're as forthcoming about the making of the films as, you know, they've been in the past, um, and based on what I saw on YouTube in this little, like, Why the Hobbit Failed uh, clip, um, I think they are, it'll be really instructive, I think, to be like, okay, here's what happens when you have a ton of prep time and everyone's really excited about what they're doing versus here's what happens when you give everyone an impossible deadline and uh, there's no chance they'll ever succeed with it. So anyway, a little bit of Hobbit Lord of the Rings stuff that's kind of been on my mind. Um, when Chloe was here, we watched Arthur Christmas, and I think, you know, uh, since I'll, I'll be doing these videos until the end of the year, uh, it's a great opportunity for me to talk about all the Christmas movies that I watch every year, um, some of which my wife does not approve of, some of which she does. So this weekend, we're very early in this process, but showing Chloe Arthur Christmas, which is a movie which we kind of stumbled on a few years ago when we had done like a Groupon or a living social thing for this movie theater in Brooklyn, and we're like, ah, oh, we gotta go see a movie before these tickets expire. So we're like, okay, Arthur Christmas, whatever, let's let's see what this is. And um, we thought it was fantastic. Like, everything about this movie was so, so good. And unfortunately, it was a box office flop, like made, um, if, if anything, it lost money. And um, it's kind of been our mission over the past few years to kind of spread the gospel of this movie to as many people as possible. Uh, we've shown it to my brothers, we've shown it to some of Liz's family, Liz's sister, um, all these different people were just like, look at what a good movie this is! And so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm hoping it achieves kind of a, a cult classic status at some point, because it's really well made. Uh, great acting, great writing, the characters are super memorable, and great replay value. Like, I can totally see watching this movie every year um, for the rest of my life. Uh, to kind of fun. That was Zoe running across the carpet. Oh, the camera's totally gonna fall over. That'll be fun. Um, but anyway, Arthur Christmas, five stars with the confidence of five. Confidence of five. Check it out, everyone. And then, um, I guess, other thing for movies is just to mention that, yeah, tons of cracked work on Sunday, and, um, went pretty smoothly, actually. We're doing all this stuff for, um, 
movie perspectives, different th movies that seem different from different perspectives. And so there's stuff there in the, in the Matrix about how, you know, how that would look to everyone in the Matrix, how Neo's just this like flying supervillain causing mass genocide. Um, everything over in Terminator World where Sarah Connor and, and uh, Miles, I don't know why I'm trying to remember his name, Miles and uh, John Connor, they're all trying to save the world. So anyway, we're going through Terminator 2, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, The Matrix, Star Wars, Star Trek, and Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Keanu Reeves gets to be in two of those things, and just a lot of clips from those movies. Um, watching a little bit of Star Trek stuff, which was something I was never really into. Um, even though I was just kind of skimming through things to find certain clips, because I was looking for certain iconic clips, I gotta say, just that assignment kind of made me more interested in the movies and the TV show. And uh, who knows, maybe one of these times when I'm a little bit pressed for a uh, new TV to watch, probably over like a summer or something like that, um, I could very well find myself on a Star Trek binge, or at least a very select binge, watching maybe like, you know, the top 20,000 best episodes instead of all 40,000, that kind of thing. But hoping to see The Hunger Games soon, and Spectre, and um, that really good Steven Spielberg one, but most of these I'm probably going to see on video. Maybe, maybe, maybe I can get away with seeing the Hunger Games or Star Wars, uh, if, if it's good, only if it's good in theaters. But uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens when we've got this little guy tying us down. I've still got two free movie tickets from when uh, the movie theater, my friend Dan and I saw um, Mad Max and accidentally started playing Pitch Perfect for 20 minutes. Um, that's a great story. I think I told it. No, I told that in an episode. So I still have those two movie tickets.